the message I have for y'all this morning is in Jonah chapter 1. Um, if you have your Bible, you can turn to Jonah chapter 1. And I'll start in verse 1. Uh, Jonah chapter 1, verse 1, and I'll start reading. It says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship that was going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it, to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Y'all, that's just three simple verses, and it's like a story in itself. Jonah was called of God to go to this city called Nineveh. And God was saying, this city called Nineveh is, they're rising up against me. They're saying, well, we don't love you anymore. We're not going to serve you anymore. And God says, I want you to go there and I want you to cry out against them. And I want you to go in the streets and preach to them and give them the gospel so that maybe they'll get saved and that they'll, they'll start looking towards me more. And Jonah says, God, they're not going to listen to me. God, I'm, uh, there's, I'm not going to Nineveh. I'm just not going to do it. In fact, I'm going to go the opposite way. Nineveh's over here. He said, I'm going to Tarshish. And that's another city. Um, so he went down and he found a ship that was Mincy going the other and way. Tom, and it says he paid the fare thereof. That means he paid the cost. Mincy he said, not only am I going to run from God, but I'm going to pay the cost to do it. He said, I, I, there's no way I'm going to Nineveh to preach to those people. He said, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to pay the cost. And y'all will see here in just a second that he paid the cost, and then he's going to pay the consequence. Y'all, in verse 4 it says, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Y'all, if you run from God, this is what happens. I'm not saying that if you run from God and you're on a cruise ship that it's going to sink. But y'all, this is pretty much what happened. He's on a big boat, and they're all going to Tarshish. And he is on this boat, and he's running from God. And God says, no, 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 you can't go this way. I need you to go to Nineveh. It's not just a want, it's a need. God said, I need you to do it because nobody else will. And Jonah said, no way, I'm still going to stay on this boat. This tempest started rising up. The wind started blowing. All the waves started crashing around this boat. And the boat was about to break. The boat was literally about to start falling apart out in the middle of the ocean. Now, that's, that's a scary thought right there to be on a boat and know that it's going to sink. You're out in the middle of the ocean. What are you supposed to do? <coughs> I mean, they didn't have life preservers back then. They didn't have stuff you could float on. They didn't have little, uh, they didn't have little rafts you could hop in that have a motor on the back of it. And you can just ride back to land. It didn't work like that. If you were out in the middle of the ocean, the boat broke. Oh well, that was your life. That was it. Um, but y'all, this is what happens if you start running from God. And y'all, down in verse 17 at the end of chapter one, it says, "Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah." And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. A lot of people say, well, how did Jonah get in the water? What happened? Did the boat break? No. The, actually, the men said, no, you're, you're casting some kind of evil on us, Jonah. And they took Jonah and they threw him off the boat. They said, we don't want you on here if you're going to make the wind start coming up. And, and God's starting, he's starting to get mad and he's going to break this boat. He said, we're going to throw you off the boat. So they threw Jonah off of this boat. And it says that God prepared a great fish. A lot of people say it's a well, but... The Bible says it was a great fish, so I'm going to say it was a great fish. Um, so God prepared this great fish to swallow up Jonah. Y'all, if there's a fish out there that big that would swallow a, a grown man whole, y'all, I, I don't want to be there. <laughs> That's a scary thought right there, to, to be inside of a fish. Like, what are you supposed to do there? Um, but like I said, Jonah paid that cost to run from God. He said, I'm going to run from God. I'm going to pay the cost to do it. But now he's going to pay the consequence. And, y'all, there is a consequence for every action. And I know a lot of people say, well, I'm not running from God. I'm going to church. I'm reading my Bible. I'm, you know, doing the things I should. I'm, I'm living a pretty good life. We may not think that we're running from God, but there's areas of our life where we can be running from God. Um, and I think the first area is our salvation. Are we running from salvation? Y'all, I'm not bold enough to say that everybody in here is saved. Uh, I couldn't stand here and say that I, I know each and every one of y'all's testimony about how y'all got saved and everything. But y'all, if, if you're running from salvation, today would be a good day to get it right. If you're running from getting saved, if you're running from being a Christian, if you're running from accepting God into your life, maybe you've lived a Christian life, but you never got saved. Then you say, well, I don't, I don't want to tell everybody that I need to get saved because what will they think about me? Chunk what they think about you. It doesn't matter what they think about you. It matters what God thinks. And y'all, if it's not right in your heart, if it's not there in your heart, if God's just not there, you say, well, 
you know, I think that God's taking good care of my family. And God can do that even if you're not saved. But y'all, that's eternity that you're risking. That's, that's eternity that you're putting on the line between heaven and hell. If you could honestly sit here and say, I don't know what would happen if I died. If you would say, I'm honestly not sure where I would end up after I die. Y'all, after Bible Club Day, I, like I always say, I, I would wish, I, I beg and I pray that you would come and talk to me at least. And y'all, it, this is completely confidential. If you come and talk to me, whatever we talk about, y'all, that's, that's completely between me and you. But y'all, I, I wish if you're, if you're not saved this morning, that, and if you don't know what the word saved means, then maybe you never have been. Y'all, come and talk to me, please. I wish you would. Um, but y'all, if you're running from salvation, today would be the best day to get it right. Why wait? In fact, if we wait, then what could happen after school? Say we're out here in the parking lot, somebody T-bones us on accident. It's an accident, but stuff happens. You get T-boned in a car accident, then what? Say if you died or maybe you went to the hospital and you ended up dying there, what would happen? Where would you go? Would it be heaven or would it be hell? And y'all, you know, this is not something to joke around about. This is, this is serious stuff. Uh, honestly, would it be heaven or hell? If we're running from salvation, like I said, today would be the best day to get it right. Y'all, are you running from service? Say you're already saved. Are you running from doing something for God? If there's something that God's really laid on your heart and he says, you know, Marissa, I really want you to do this. Or, or Clayton, I really want you to do something for me and here's what I want you to do. If we're running from it, then we're, we're pretty much running from God. If that's what God wants us to do and we're running from that doing, if we're running from that action, that whatever he wants us to do, we might as well be running from God. And y'all, I, I hope that you don't do that because y'all, we might just end up in the fish's belly, just like what happened here. See, Jonah ran from God. He ended up in the fish's belly. And y'all, that fish's belly is just a place where, I, I mean, it's a literal fish's belly in the story here, but y'all, it just a, just a figurative thought here. If we're in the fish's belly, that means that God has brought us to a point where we have nowhere else to go. Think about Jonah. He was in here, it says, three days and three nights. The only way he was able to get out of that fish's belly was because the fish threw him up, pretty much. It says that he vomited out onto the land. He, he pretty much threw Jonah up onto the shore, and that was it. But he was in there three days and three nights. God put him in a place where he had nowhere else to go except to pray and to talk to God. God said, I just want you to do something for me, that's all. It's not that big of a deal. You know, I, I really don't ask much of you, Jonah. But Jonah still ran from him, and he ended up in this place in the belly of the fish where he had nowhere else to look but up to God. He had nowhere else to go but to Nineveh because that's what God wanted him to do. Um, y'all, if you're running from service, I hope that you don't. But um, y'all, we could be running from Scripture. We could be running from stuff that's in this Bible. And if we're running from the Scripture, John chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, uh, in the beginning was the Word, talking about the Bible, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If the Word is with God, and if the Word was God, and it still is, then y'all, if we're running from Scripture, if we're running from things that are in this Bible, then that means we're technically running from God. Um, if there's things in this Bible, you know, there's the thou shalt and the thou shalt not. There's the things that we should do and the things that we shouldn't do. If we're going against whatever this Bible says, say if the Bible says, thou shalt not do this, but you still do it anyways, or the Bible says that you should do this, but you don't do it, we might as well be running from God. And y'all, if we're running from God, like I keep saying, you could end up in the fish's belly. You could end up just like Jonah did in that place where you have nowhere else to go but to look to God. And y'all, a lot of times people say, well, it's just Satan breaking me down. You know, it's just Satan trying to knock me off my feet. But y'all, sometimes God puts us through things just to test our faith. Now you say, oh, why would God do that? Because God wants to see how much he can use us. God wants to see how much trust he can put in us. Y'all, if, if you had a friend and you really wanted to trust him to do something, but he wasn't very trustworthy, would you, would you trust him to do it? If he wasn't trustworthy? Uh, I mean, honestly, if, if he wasn't honest, but you wanted him to do something for you, you couldn't trust him to do it because he's not trustworthy. Y'all, that's just what God wants us to do. He wants us to be trustworthy. He wants us to be honest. He wants us to be faithful. And y'all, it's, it's, uh, it's a big matter here, and I hope that you take it to heart. Y'all, if, um, if you're running from something in your life, today would be the best day to get it right. Just pray to God and say, God, I know that I've been running from this, and I know that 
Um, I know that there's been a lot of stuff going on, and I just keep just keep running from it for some reason. And you just say, God, I'm 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 done running. God, I'm done fleeing. I'm done trying to run the other way. I'm trying done trying to go against the grain. God, I want to do what you want me to do. If we pray that prayer and we mean it in our hearts and we actually start putting some effort, some action toward it, I promise you God will reward that. And, and God loves you, y'all. And he, he loves me. He loves y'all. He loves Miss Curly. I don't know where Miss Curly's at, but y'all, um, y'all, uh, y'all keep praying for me. Keep praying for everybody else. Uh, I'll pray and then we can head out.